Hi, welcome to Built for Life. Hasn't it been great so far? We've been learning all about watch your mouth. And it's so important, isn't it, to watch our mouths and we've been learning how important it actually is because we spend much more time in our daily walk with Jesus, in our workplace, amongst our family, amongst our friends, and that can cause trouble, but it can also have a very positive effect as well. And so in session one, as we broke that down, we learned all about mind your language. And in session two, we looked at damage limitation and we broke that down into a number of parts as well. But today we're in session three and it's all about positive speech. We're going to break this down into two parts here, positive speech, and we're going to look at this area in this subject today. But before we do that, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I begin to teach now, I pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit will touch hearts and minds, enlighten our understanding on the subject of this that we're doing today, looking at the how to the positive side of our mouth. We've looked at the negative side, we've looked at the damage it can cause, but now I pray, Father, that we'd understand now how to use our mouth in a positive way. In Jesus' name I ask, Amen. Remember to write down five bullet points if you can. No more, you can have less, of course, but no more than five bullet bullet points and always do the discussion question at the end whether you're in a group whether you're just with a friend whether you're on a zoom whether you're with uh, you know on uh, on one of the social media things with your mates or just on your own it doesn't matter but churn the question over at the end because it helps to digest exactly what the holy spirit has said and also to put it into action because these studies is not about just keep on learning and learning and learning it's all about putting the word into action and also living the life that christ has in us now remember if you've done just jesus and if you haven't i remind you and encourage you to do that we found our identity in christ and Built for Life is all about, as we have already received him, now walk in him. So Built for Life is all, uh, always about walking practically in life now. We see in the scriptures how the life of Christ that dwells in us now is described and how he acts and how he lives, for, wants to live through us now. And so we, as we see the word of God, we're seeing that description. And so now we must learn to walk in and, and with and allow that life of Jesus to flow through our practical life. And that's spiritual, folks. And I keep saying this, I know, but I'll keep on saying it. It is spiritual. All this stuff is just as spiritual as prophecy and, and visions and dreams. And we've got to get a hold of that because the witness that the world has is you in your daily living. Your family has in your daily living. Your husband or your wife has in your daily living. And Jesus is 24-7, not just on a Sunday, folks. And so it's allowing his life to live through us. But that's not a tick list. That's not like a Ten Commandment list you have on the fridge. What we're learning is the life of Jesus that's already in you, the likeness of Jesus that's already in you, wants to flow through every part of your life. Amen. So it's, it's Christ living in you from the inside out, not from the outside in. We must get that revelation, folks. So, now let's just carry on with this study today. And we're looking at session 3, A, which is speak the truth. Speak the truth. So now let's just go on the notes to the session purpose. And it says this. In this session, you will begin to realise living out Christ with your mouth will cause your language to change so that your words are based on truth 
Words based on truth, folks. And don't we live in a day and age where it seems to be easy to, for people to tell lies, doesn't it? You know, we, we used to believe in society that we was only as good as our word. We was only as good as our word. And a person's word meant everything. It was, you know, a person's word on a deal, a person's word on a promise, a person's word on something they was going to do meant everything. A person's word counted for something. And of course, that's been whittled away over the years in society, in this fallen world. And so people's words uh, are not really trusted today. But one thing we can understand that as a Christian, that we have Jesus inside of us living through our lives and he is truth. His words are truth. His actions are truth. His life is truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. So when we're talking from a Christian point of view, and you might have only just become a Christian maybe, we're understanding that our identity now is one of truth because Jesus Christ is truth. He lives in us and wants to live through us so that our words, our actions should be based now on truth and according to truth. And so if you're always a person in the world and you've become a Christian, or you might have been a Christian many years, and you're used to almost telling that lie, almost, and we've understood some of the, the, the issues around that, using words of decoys, deflections, distractions, away from things. So it's not always an out-and-out -out lie, is it? It's about you know the way we we use words sometimes to protect our own selves and put defenses around ourselves or to do damage to other people in order or in order to elevate our situation so the, there's various ways that these lies come out and you know we can we can do that but that's not the way the holy spirit now wants you to live and if that was your pattern before in the world, you know, that now is something that Jesus has changed on the inside of you. Now he wants you to live the truth out. He wants you to walk in truth. And especially when it comes to the mouth, that we learn to speak truth. Now, as we look at the word of God, we, we'll see this really played out very clearly and instructing us very clearly. The verse of scripture today is Ephesians 4, 25. Ephesians 4, 25. There are many verses of scripture that tell us the same kind of thing. But Ephesians 4, 25, it says this, Wherefore, put away lying. Straight to the point, isn't it? Speak every man truth with his neighbour, for we are members of one another. So here we see the Apostle Paul writing in Ephesians and he gets right to the crux of the matter and he says, look, put away lying, put away lies, you know, because we're members of one another. Now, if you read Ephesians chapter 4, there's a build up to this verse in which he's saying, look, you need to, you, you're called of God, you've been called out as the church, you've been saved, you've been called by God himself. So walk worthy of that calling. And notice the way, again, in another kind of way, Paul puts this. He's saying, look, you're called. You're called out once. You're saved. You've heard the call of salvation and you have responded to that calling. Now walk worthy of that calling. Walk in a way that reflects that calling. That's exactly what he's saying. So this ain't about trying to get saved again and again. This is not about trying to, you know, get what when get from God and 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 and, and get the demon of lies out of you. Because no, you if you're saved, if you're called, you've responded to the the gospel. You believed upon Christ. He now lives on on the inside of you. You have received 
that calling. You have received that salvation. You have received that life. But now let's walk. You see, now let's walk. If, if truly Christ is in us as a saved person, if truth is in us, if the Holy Spirit, who is known as the Spirit of truth, is in you, now let's walk that way. And it, and it goes on to say, look, you've put off the old man. You've put off the old man with his deeds. You've put off your old life, that means. The old you that used to tell lies very frequently. The old you that used to tell lies to protect yourself and defend yourself. The old, the old you that used to tell lies to distract from what needed to be changed in your life and your actions. The old you that used to tell lies has now got to change because Christ lives in you and he, he you know you will know from the inside that that prompting of the spirit of God in you saying look let, let's change your mouth now let's stop telling lies amen and so that's something now we've got to learn to do and learn to live and from the source of Christ in you so put away lying and the word put off or putting away means to put off or away which anyone gives up and renounces. So that's the salvation thing, isn't it? And it is a, a term that's in the past tense, but with an action that now we live out because we have put off the, the, the old way of lying. We have done that in Christ. Our old life of lying has been crucified with Christ. But now is an action of let's live from that place. Let's live from the new life we now have. Amen. And so let's have nothing to do with the old past ways we used to approach our family, our work, our church situation, our old life that used to lie now. Let's, let's you know, kind of put that off now. Let's deal with that now and say, look, Christ has crucified it. It's, that scene of lying has been crucified with Christ. Now I'm going to act differently by speaking the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the word lying here means conscious and intentional falsehood. I'll say that again. Conscious and intentional falsehood. And so, and so we sometimes we 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 lie by making mistakes, don't we? Might, again, we might promise something to somebody, and then we get to a point where actually it was unachievable, or we couldn't do it, or we said we was going to be uh, nine o'clock on the dot, and it's five past nine, you know, because we got stuck in traffic or whatever, you know. So life happens, doesn't it? So we're not talking about life that just happens and we have to minimize stuff by being more organized in life but stuff happens in life so we're not talking about the stuff that sometimes happens you know i don't want you to get so hung up you know we're like crossing the t's and dotting the i's as it were this is about intentional falsehood and conscious lies and you've all done it i've done it. you've done it if you're honest you know and 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 as a christian you get that prompt in your heart well, why did you say that because you you know it's not quite true is it you know um that's you know why did you put it that way to defend yourself when really this is the truth and 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 sometimes we can get into habits this is habit forming now and it can be our old habits you know our old actions it's not our old life in terms of we, you know we've got a, a, a fight going on inside of us we have the life of christ but our old mindsets our old habits we can act upon because we remember them and we used to live according to those habits and we remember them and we can live those habits out through our lives but the holy spirit if that's you today wants to change that you change the way you approach in conversation and you, you say i'm not going to be a liar i'm not going to be a person who in, un, intentionally brings falsehood intentionally lies anymore amen praise the lord and so that's what we're talking about here it's so important and it goes on to say 
putting away lying, every man speaking the truth with his neighbour. So why is this positive speech after I've just talked about a negative side? Because this is like two wings of an aeroplane, really. So on the one side, we, we recognise that the truth is now in us. Our old habits were lying for certain reasons and intentionally sometimes lying. Now that has to stop in terms of our practical walk in Jesus Christ. But now we have to learn also, not just to put a stop to lying, we have to learn to speak the truth. Because you can put a stop to lying sometimes by, you know, not saying, not saying anything at all. You know, uh, but that's not what the, the Bible's trying to say. The, the Word of God is saying, look, put away lying, yes, them old habits, but learn now to speak the truth with each other. And that's so powerful, isn't it? And the word truth here, if you look at your word in focus, means speak always according to truth. According to truth. So this is really in two facets. Number one, speak the truth. You know, speak the truth. In any given situation, you might be in your marriage, speak the truth. Be open with one another in your married life, in your friendship be open you know and you know i'm not saying we kind of have to you know go everywhere and it to everybody and and speak our heart so much and for it to be trampled on i'm not saying that at all but you know the situations in life and your relationships you have where you've got to learn to speak the truth with one another you know and and so it builds stronger relationships it spill, builds a stronger family it builds a stronger business it builds a stronger marriage it builds a stronger relationship with your kids because your kids need to know that when you say something you're actually telling the truth you know you're actually telling the truth and it's so important truth is so important. If you think of it like this, Jesus, who is true, spoke the truth. And those are two facets, aren't they? They're two facets of truth. He is the truth, so he speaks the truth. You can trust his word 100%. Because he is truth, and because he is truth, and there's no lie in him, he speaks the truth. And this is what the Bible is actually saying, that we understand that we speak according to truth. We should speak according to the truth, who is Jesus in us. We should speak according to the truth of who we are in Jesus Christ. And so I really want to home in on this. Because you, your speech has to be connected to the life. Let me say that again. Your speech has to be connected to the life. Your speech has to be connected to truth. You will not be able to speak truth unless you're connected to truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ. So our mouth, you see, has to be submitted to the life of Christ already in you. Truth, Jesus himself, you see. And so that's the key. So you are able as a Christian now to change. You, the devil doesn't make you do it. No, 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 no. Nobody's got the hand behind your back saying you must tell lies. No, you must learn to speak the truth. Because truth is powerful. It is the word of truth that has transformed your life and my life. And so the words of truth are so powerful folks and they can transform a situation they can transform a relationship they can transform your self-confidence because you base life on truth and so the words of truth as well are not just you know uh just what you speak to others it's what you speak to yourself now hear me clearly because i can hear the holy spirit just really bringing this to my heart right now some of you are speaking lies to yourself you speak lies about to yourself con concerning a situation. Well, it was their fault. It was their fault, not mine. And really, you know differently. You had a part to play in a situation that's just erupted in your family or marriage. You know, it was their fault, not mine, in that workplace situation. 
And we can defend ourselves with lies and not speak the truth to ourselves. And so even as Christians now, it's not just about speaking the truth to each other, you see. It's about speaking the truth. And according to the truth of Jesus in us, it's about speaking that to our lives. You can speak a lie to yourself and say, well, I'm not forgiven, I'm not righteous, God doesn't love me, I'm, I, I'm not dedicated enough, I, 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 I can't do this. And you list, are you, are you, are you a person who lists in your life, uh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, and I can't. Well, that's lies, you see. That's lies, isn't it? You, because you've not only got to speak truth, it's got to be according to truth, you see. So on the one hand, we've got to understand we can change. We can do this. We can do the other because it's according to truth. We are righteous. So don't just look at the, the, the areas that are so obvious to you. How you speak to yourself is how you'll speak to others. Also, it's about the truth in Christ, according to truth. So when we speak to ourselves and speak to others, it's so important, folks, that it's according to the identity we have in Christ, according to truth. So I can't go around saying how unrighteous I am. I can't go around saying how unholy I am. I can't do that because according to truth in Christ, he's made me holy. According to the truth in Christ, he's made me righteous. I can say to myself, which sometimes might be the truth, I'm not walking according to that. See, that's different. But I can't say I, I am not. I am not those things that I have received in Christ Jesus. I have to speak the truth. I am those things so therefore, I need to change the way I walk according to who I am in Christ. See, that's the difference, folks. Amen. I hope you read again this message. Praise the Lord. So learn not only to put away lies, but also speak truth that is anchored according to the truth, which is the life of Christ in you, your new identity in Christ in you. Praise the Lord. Also, it's about being honest, isn't it? Honesty is key, even with yourself and with others. And so sometimes we can hide our weaknesses. We can hide our problems from other people, especially our brethren, because we don't want to speak the truth. Neither do we want to speak a lie so we can hide. And I really want to challenge you uh, at this time that it's because because we have in christianity today such a powerful teaching well a powerful doctrine as it were that's gone around for many years uh, positive confession and i'm going to hit it right on the nail now because positive and confession has its place but what that's led in christian circles today is that people are frightened to share their weaknesses People are frightened to share their needs. People are frightened to share their feelings because a positive confession has overtook them. So if they positively confess certain things or don't positively confess, then that means they're not going to get what they want, you see, or they're not going to get that breakthrough or they're not going to get that change in the situation. And so they won't speak the truth. And so some positive confession can turn out actually to be a lie because it's not really according to truth and it's not really according, it's not really speaking the truth either. And so we mustn't be frightened as Christians to share our feelings. We mustn't be frightened as Christians to share our weaknesses or our needs or our problems. We, we're encouraged to share the truth. And the truth might be sometimes that we're not feeling great. The truth might be sometimes you're not feeling that powerful. Now that doesn't mean we tell a lie about ourselves and saying we're, we're, we're not powerful. No, it's saying we might not be feeling powerful. We're not, not, you know, it's not saying, oh, we, we tell ourselves we're unrighteous. 
No, we might not be feeling righteous. And so that's part of the truth. I say, I'm not feeling righteous. I'm not feeling holy, but I know I'm holy. So that's the, the two aspects in one, isn't it? It's not telling a lie of how you're feeling and the problems you've got, but it's also speaking according to the truth of who you are in Christ. And so you can combine those two aspects very powerfully together. But the reality is, sometimes positive confession has gone too far and we begin to tell lies about our situation because we don't want to come across to God or to people or even to ourselves as weak. But sometimes we need to speak the truth. And so if you need counselling, if you need help, if you need to speak to your leaders, if you need to speak to strong, mature brethren who can help you through some issues, then please do. That's not a bad thing. That's about speaking truth. But neither speaking a lie either. Praise the Lord, the two together. Amen. So now let's just turn to life in focus, which is summarizing kind of thing what I've, I've said to you in this teaching so far. And it says this, you can make mistakes when it comes to speaking the truth to people. You may say something that you believe to be true, but turns out not to be. So we're not talking on those issues, are we? Because we're talking really about intentional falsehood. Learn to apologize when you have said something that turns out not to be true. You know, let's not make a big deal about it, but let's apologize and, and, and be ready to apologize when we need to. The Christian should always have, have as always put off once, uh, as put off once for the intentional lying nature. What does that mean? It means that we have put off, because we've been crucified with Christ and raised with Christ, we have put off that lying nature that we used to have. We have put that off once and for all in Christ. But now let's walk according to the new life we have. Amen. Amen. So live intentionally now, truthful from now on. Again, this is not about getting sweats and writing a tick list. This is about listening to the Spirit in us, knowing what the Word of God says, now allowing the Spirit of truth in us to show us how to walk truthfully. Amen. Sometimes you can tell lies to protect yourself, but sometimes you need to make yourself vulnerable. Amen. So that's what I was talking about there, about positive confession. Sometimes we just need actually to tell the truth and, and, and learn to speak the truth without pouring ourselves down or losing our identity in Christ and, and not be too frightened about positive confession theology. Amen. Speaking truth is an antidote to the dog-eat-dog -dog attitude. And that's very much in the workplace, very much in the family, isn't it? The dog-eat-dog-eat -dog attitude sometimes. And, and truth is an antidote to that. Learn not only to speak truth, but according to truth. And that's so important in church life, to speak the truth one to another. So I'm constantly, when I'm counselling people, when I'm speaking and listening to, to their problems or their needs or their weaknesses, and that's fine and that's great, but when I counsel people now or when I want to help people, I will speak according, not to my opinion, not according to Joe Bloggs' opinion, not according to church tradition opinion, but I will speak according to the truth that is found in Christ Jesus. And if you've done just Jesus, then uh, Foundations course, that's what I speak according to. It's the truth that is in Christ I will counsel with, encourage with, exhort in. And I encourage you as Christians, one to each other, to do exactly the same. Amen. Speaking according to truth is speaking according to the truth that is in Christ. Amen. So now let's just have a light bulb moment. Let the Holy Spirit enlighten with the light of his word what he's saying to you in a very simple way. And so the, the light bulb moment today is don't protect yourself 
with lies. Don't protect yourself with lies. Discuss. And this is something, a question now for you to discuss either with yourself or with others. Amen. Why do people find it hard to speak truth? Why do people find it hard to speak truth? And there's many reasons, isn't there? Maybe you could list some of those reasons. But again, I just want to encourage you at the end of this Built for Life session today, that true positive speech is about, yes, speaking the truth, you know, about your situations and, and being open to that with your brethren, not to intentionally cause falsehood in a situation, but always according to the truth as well, you in Christ. So there's that balance together. And when you get that balance right, amen, it's a powerful thing. Praise God. So until next time I'm built for life, God bless you.